Hey everybody, this week's recap is brought to you by Pendragon Studios and their new narrative adventure game, The Eternaut, which is crowdfunding on April 9th. This is based on one of the most widely respected, hugely influential comic books to ever come out of Argentina. It's a post-apocalyptic setting where there's a blanket of snow that never stops everywhere and it'll kill you if it touches you. And there's mysterious forces behind it as people desperately cling on for hope and try to survive in this barren wasteland. The game itself features a huge level of interactivity as players combine cards and items they find in the world to craft new things to survive, and survive they must against really harrowing and grim adventures. This looks like it's going to be a phenomenal game, and if you'd like to know more about it, there's a link for it down in the show notes. And you're in luck, folks. You could be playing a demo of it right now on Tabletop Simulator, or if you feel like it, you can print out a print-and-play version of the game to get a sense for what it's like. Again, it's going to be launching on April 9th, and I just want to say thanks to Pendragon Studios for sponsoring the recap. And hello, everybody. We're going to be doing three things today, like always. Telling you about what went up on the channel over the last week. Telling you some cool stuff on other people's channels that I think is worth your time. And then telling you about some new games I discovered while... Uh, working my way through Board Game Geek got a very, very cool one I'm very excited about this week. But as always, let's start out with my channel. We've got a couple of exclusive for backers of the show who help keep Rotto running. What are they? Well, first of all, we've got the latest Gen Jogs, where Jen and I sit down and talk about all the games we played over the preceding month. And Jen ranks them on a one to five star scale. And without exception, she always surprises the heck out of me because I thought I knew what she thought. Um, but sometimes she has some very interesting takes on some of these games. It's always a blast to do, uh, the, and that we've got the latest Gen Jog. Again, if you are a supporter of the show on Patreon or here on YouTube as a member. The other exclusive is a uh, full playthrough that Jen and I did of a game that came out a couple of years ago called Fife. And man, folks, this is definitely flying under the radar. It is such a cool game. Uh, fairly abstract, to be fair, but um, all about trying to play your chips out to your grid and also scoring chips represented by cool little surfboard pieces on the outer edge of your grid and trying to basically... Um, score off of the rules you've created for yourself. And somehow you end up creating rules that are very tough to follow. It's really brilliant. My wife loved it to pieces. And uh, you can watch us work our way through it uh, and maybe find out if it'd be right for you. This is available for all backers at all level. Originally, it was a higher level exclusive, but every month I give a new run through for everybody, even folks who only back at $1 a month as a thank you. Okay, folks. So those are the exclusives on the channel, but what is available for everybody to see? Well, um, if there's a Gen Jog out not far behind, there's me doing my monthly roundup. And I talked about 17 games that I played in March. In countdown form, from my least favorite to my most favorite, I crown a new game of the month. And... Uh, uh, it's just a great rapid-fire source of info. It's always easy to skip past games you don't care and jump to the ones you do. Jen and I were at the Dice Tower West Convention Library or Dice Tower West Convention, and I played several games there. Uh, prototypes for stuff that isn't coming for a while. And uh, yeah, you're going to get a lot of good info in the latest roundup. What else? Okay. Oh, man. I did a preview for Horror on the Orient Express, which is blowing up right now on crowdfunding, and with good reason. This game melds the um, you know crisis disaster management of a pandemic-style co-op game with the deduction of an Agatha Christie murder mystery style game. Instead of murder on the Orient Express, it's horror on the Orient Express as the Orient Express itself plummets through hell and we've got to stay alive, fight off the monsters, but also uh, you know, interview all the passengers to find out who are the secret cultists among us. This game uh, is hugely successful so far with very good reason and I try to demonstrate why in my... I had so much fun filming this run-through for horror on the Orient Express. 
Also, I've got a preview for Cat Packs, which is a sweet, charming a little game all about trying to make packs of cats. Uh, it's a multi-use card game where you're sacrificing some cards to play others and then building them out to a grid. And while this game looks at first glance like a really, really lightweight, family-friendly gateway-style thing, do not judge a book by its cover. Just because it's got cute, adorable cats, just absolutely amazing cat art, my wife fell in love with it, the actual um, top Tiling is incredibly challenging and crunchy, um, and really, really surprised me and Jen. Uh, this has got, I mean, while it's simple to play, very easy rules. Oh, the depth is really here, and I try to show that in the preview. Okay, what else? Oh, I also did a rapid review for Revive Call of the Abyss. Uh, just spent a few minutes talking about what's new in this expansion for a game that was in my top 10 a few years ago when it first came out. And then last year it got an expansion, which, as I say right there, is a whole bunch more of what you already love. But what is it? Well, I'll tell you in less than three minutes in my rapid review of it. Okay, and then um, oh, finally, I did the latest weekly Q&A, where I talked about all kinds of stuff. What are those? What is the problematic nature of top 10s, and what does it reveal about humanity? Um, how how is the board game media landscape changing based on um, audience preferences? Also, not for nothing, I tell you about the game uh, that I hate more than anything else in the world. My absolute worst game I ever played, and I literally go on a pretty aggressive rant against it for a while. So it was a very interesting uh, Q&A. I got a little out of character there. Wasn't quite so... Uh, wasn't feeling it all the way through. But anyway, uh, you can enjoy that Q&A number 29. Oh, and then also, of course, we've got a new R and R. Ray and Chris and Ruel and myself this time talking about travel games. This is like the third time that I've hit the travel game topic on the channel, and I love it. Maybe it's the fourth time. Anyway, um, they've got some very interesting uh, choices for travel games that would never have occurred to me. I've got uh, ten new ones that I have not talked about in the past, and a lot of the ones I talked about came from my experiences living on the road for six months traveling. So it just made sense to try and hit this topic again. And as always, the r and is so much fun, especially if you check out the extended edition where there's audience participation and all kinds of extra stuff. Okay, folks, that's what we had on the Rotto channel this week. What about other channels? I'm glad you asked. First of all, Tabletop Turtle did this amazing Top 100, uh, his personal Top 100 uh, board games and the stories they tell. And the thing is, I'll warn you right now, folks, this video is an hour and 20 minutes long, but it is riveting. It is worth watching from start to finish because he set out to make what I think might be now the most ambitious uh, countdown video the industry has ever seen. I thought I had previously done it because years ago I did a uh, a 20-part advent calendar thing where I went all around the country of Malta and gave folks kind of like a travelogue and behind-the-scenes stuff. He did this for his top 100. And while it starts out, him just living his normal day, telling us about games, taking his dog for a walk. His dog is very cool. Oh my gosh, this thing goes off the rails and goes in some very unexpected directions as he continues his countdown. But every step of the way, doing a really brilliant job quickly summarizing what makes these games uh, important to him from the stories that they tell. And folks, if you make it all the way to the end, I guarantee you will subscribe to Tabletop Turtle because... His entry for his number one was, I don't even want to say what it was, but it was amazing. And uh, it's just absolutely incredible, uh, incredible journey that we go on through his top 100 games, but also through his life. And you won't regret it, folks. It's my video of the week, other than the stuff on my channel, of course. But I've got a couple other ones to tell you about. Um, Chris is back. Uh, Chris, you know, of the r, &R Show and his own channel, um... Room and Board Reviews. Every month, he does these um, bracketed deathmatch things where he has a topic and all his patron backers vote. And they go through um, you know, bracket after bracket. This game versus that game. This game versus that game. Until it comes up with a number one. This time, he had his voters pick uh, from his personal top 30 games of all time. And it was 
heartbreaking for him to go through this as his voters did not agree with his choices. But while it's a really interesting dive into um, you know 30 really good, well populated games, if you'd like to know a bit more about those games, check out the comments because I did my own personal ranking of those 30 games as a comment because I like ranking things. But here's the deal, folks. There's a mystery going on spread throughout this video as well um, that culminates in an absolutely amazing number one. Uh, this is two lists where you got to make it to the number one because it's worthwhile because it just kind of... I don't want to spoil anything about what happens, but it comes out of left field. And let's just say Chris, who is in his day job a professional, professional stage actor, he got to use his acting chops to very good effect. I really enjoyed uh, his board game deathmatch for his top 30 games of all time. What else have I got? Oh, oh, good old Castelli. Uh, Castelli is one of the OG media people. He is from Australia. He uh, used to post videos all the time. He took years off. He's coming back now. And he did this amazing uh, board game music parody uh, coming up with new lyrics to beat it, um, where he's trying to play Target for Today, a World War II um, you know, battle game. And he did a great job. Uh, you know, of course, you know, beat it is one of the all-time greats. Uh, you know, an amazing rock song. And, uh, you he did a very good job, and I was really enjoying it. But then, when it gets to um, the Eddie Van Halen guitar solo, he blew me away because he totally rocks it. He actually plays that solo, and he's incredible. I had no idea. So, a really, really fun video. Um, uh, you know, just, just, just a good way to get together. And look at him shred. It's incredible. One more video I want to talk about. Oh. So I saw that Star Wars Unlimited, uh, the uh, new Magic the Gathering, you know, style game set in Star Wars, was you know hitting the hotness, and it was like one of the most played games. I was like, okay, I've not paid attention to this game at all. I guess I should look at it, even though I know I'm not going to like it. So I checked out this run through from Meeple Village. I had not seen her channel before, and let me just tell you, folks, she does a fantastic job. If you like my run throughs, you will like this run through. Um, she's just playing two handed, you know, describing you know the gameplay from both perspectives uh, all the way through. A game does a really great job, and not for nothing, I really enjoyed the surprise guest appearance by her dog. Reminded me of my days filming back in Malta when sometimes you'd spot the eagles in the uh, backyard about my only complaint and it's a silly little one is every time it comes back cuts back to her uh she's wearing a legend of zelda ocarina of time shirt when it should be linked to the past come on that's my big complaint. It's a pretty minor complaint. It's an excellent run through from Meeple Village. And if you're at all interested in this new super hot Star Wars um, card game, you'll want to check it out. There's links for it down in the show notes, along with everything else that I talked about today. Okay, folks. So, those were a bunch of new videos. Uh, stick around to the end. We've got a playlist that'll take you through all of them. But I've got one more thing to do right now. I've got three, three, three games that I found on Board Game Geek that are really of interest to me, and maybe they'd be interested in you, and you'd want to put them on your wish list and subscribe the same way I did. So let me go on ahead and jump into it, starting with, oh, folks, this just instantly rockets to the top of my list, uh, Rasatha. It's the latest from Vladimir Suchi and Delicious Games. Uh, this is going to be his big Essen release. There's not much other than a very, very nice-looking uh, piece of cover art it's a route building game set in um, third century AD in the Middle East, um, and uh, you know in what is now today what was it? Oh, Syria. But um, this is a game where you're focusing on building the routes and moving along and selling your goods and all that. But the game really focuses hard on water. I love the subtitle. Buy my spice. Isn't your camel thirsty? Your garden is amazing. Because, um, because this is a dry, arid land, we are spending a lot of our focus on trying to make um, water wells and, and, and springs so that people can actually use the track. And then when the water starts to flow, we start growing gardens as well along this route. And I mean, honestly, I expect that will be a very, very fun and engaging and meaningful theme. And Vladimir Suchi never fails. He has never failed me in his designs. If there's a new game from Delicious, I gotta play it. And um, so very, very excited for Rasafa uh, coming, I'm assuming, this uh, year. What else was there? Oh, oh, it's a DC Heroes United. Um, now, me, I was 
uh, I was very, very impressed by the prequel to this um, from Cool Mini or Not, the uh, Marvel United series. Um, you know, just absolutely brilliant, sweet little... Um, what do you call it? Uh, a cooperative superhero game where the interplay between players is so brilliantly designed because the last card I play is something on my turn is something that you could then leverage on your turn. So smart. A really great gateway, but with real depth. And, um, you know, it's gotten so much. Marvel United, so much content over the years. It's really cool to see the other side of the fence, DC Heroes United. Uh, I assume it's going to use the same type of gameplay, but now... Now you're going to see Superman and Batman going up against the Joker and Wonder Woman and Cheetah and, and you know, all the DC favorites. So I'm very happy for folks, for DC fans, all these years they've been waiting, they're finally going to get their hands on. Not much information available right now other than pretty much what you can guess from the box aisle, but I just wanted to let people know uh, if, you're, if, if you love the holy trinity of superheroes and everything that comes associated with that, an amazing co-op is coming. DC Heroes United. And then and finally, I think I've already talked about this before. River Valley Glassworks, I've talked about it on the channel that um, when I covered it in, um, in my preview, I was just showing you the basic game, and they've talked about uh, the uh, expansions that are coming, which I didn't get a chance to play. Um, but they now have an entry for it on Board Game Geek. The River Valley Glassworks, River Glass and Other Sundries. That is a combination of six different modules you can turn on. Um, and uh, yeah. It's a must-have. That, I think, is what's going to take uh, River Valley Glassworks to the stratosphere. And who knows? Maybe make it a candidate for a Spiel des Jahres win. I think, uh, from what I've seen of these, it deserves consideration. And so I just wanted to mention, hey, uh, the, uh, the expansion is now on Board Game Geek as well. And that's it, folks. Another month is done. There's the playlist if you would like to uh, know more. And uh, otherwise, I'm going to get back to this. Because I'm right in the middle of a game of Abundance Earth Expansion. Oh, I am having a great time with it. But um, that will have to wait for another day, folks. Because uh, we're going to end it right about 